Hey, my name is Ben. Thanks for stopping by. Today we're going to be installing a dimmer switch, and in this case, it's an Eaton brand toggle dimmer with a preset slider on the side here and an indicator light. Uh, this one also happens to be capable of changing the color so you can snap this front cover off here and change the color over. I'll leave a link in the description to this exact dimmer if you are interested in that. Um, so this is the one we're going to be installing. This can be used in a three-way application or it can also be used as a single pole. So this uh, first one we're going to be wiring here is going to be just a single pole application. So we'll show you kind of how that goes. So right here I have my wires that are ready to go already. This is how I prepared them uh, to be able to be wired when I roughed it in. Uh, I've got all of my wires coming in and come going out of the boxes labeled with a little um, label. And uh, right here, as you'll see, I actually have these wires connected currently. Obviously verify that there's no power before you mess with this, but I've already done so. Uh, so in this case I have uh, this one is the power coming in and this one is the power going to the recess lights in the kitchen. So uh, we're going to go ahead and start with uh, stripping three quarters of an inch of sheathing off of all three of these wires. Alright so right at the top here it says top so you want to keep it in this orientation. Uh, your power coming into this is going to be the black screw on the bottom and your power going to your lights is going to be this gold screw on the side. Now actually with the way these connect, the wires push into the back and then this screw tightens down onto the wire, in which case the length of these actually should be closer to a half inch, uh, with the exception of the ground. The ground still needs to be about three quarters of an inch, so I actually just have to go ahead and clip off just a little bit so that we don't have copper wire sticking out the back here once this is fully seated. I'm going to go ahead and start with the power coming into the switch and insert this in here. Now normally push-in connectors are something you want to avoid um, but it's the type of push-in connectors that are spring-loaded. When you tighten a screw down onto it like this it is, it is perfectly fine. Um, so you get this nice and snug, tug on it, make sure that it seems like it's staying in place well and then we're ready to do this one here. Now we're going to bend a loop on this to attach the ground. So uh, pay attention to the screw and you want to rotate the, make the hook in the direction that the screw tightens to the right. So we're going to go ahead and get a hold of that and rotate it just like so. And hook this on here. And go ahead and tighten it down. Now we're going to very carefully fold the wires back into the box. And you want to push the switch all the way back into position before using the screws to tighten it in. And that's so that you're not putting uh, excessive pressure on the switch uh, when you tighten it in place with the screws. So we know here that we have um, room for the, the switch to push in. Uh, and you're not going to damage anything because you can feel how much resistance there is with your hands. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, tighten it in here. You just want to go until this is just snug and that's it. Just so that it doesn't move back and forth. But it's just to hold it in place and that's it. So uh, that is now installed. So we will go ahead and uh, turn the power on so we can test how it works. So sorry about the angle here, uh, but this is I think the best angle for you to be able to see what's going on. Uh, so when the light is turned off, there's, a, there's an indicator light here. I guess it's to help you find the switch in the dark. It's just a very, very light uh, green glow, which I think I like a lot actually. Um, but that could be something, if you don't want any light at all, that may be a negative. Uh, now you can go ahead and uh, there's three different configuration pieces here. You have the regular slider here on the side of the switch, as well as a um, dial here and a dial here. <clears throat> so initially we have this the dimmer set all the way down, and I'm going to turn it on. 
and you can see the lights came on uh, nice and dim, just like you would expect. Uh, now this bottom thing, this bottom of dial right here is for if the uh, if the bulbs that you're trying to use need an additional jolt of power when they are turned on, then you can change the setting. I'm gonna turn it all the way up, and I'll show you what they do. Now with my LED lights, it causes a very bright temporary flash. So I actually have to turn that back down a little bit so that you have I have just the right amount of power. Well, a little bit too much yet. Just the right amount of power coming in to turn on the LEDs. I'm going to turn it off for a little bit longer here and see what it does. So that's just about right. Now this uh, top dial here is to set the minimum brightness. So if I wanted these to not turn down this low, I can turn this up a little bit and then the rest of the range of dimming would be done with this. I like having the full range, so I'm going to turn this all the way back down and then I can control the full range of the dimmer switch uh, with, the, with the slide on the side of the switch. So that's how this uh, dimmer switch works uh, and I think it's going to work really well with the LED bulbs that I have. So that's been it. If this video helped you out, please rate it up and feel free to subscribe to the channel for more helpful videos. Uh, you can hit that uh, little bell icon if you want to be notified uh, when I upload a new video. Anyway, again, I appreciate it and we'll talk to you in the next video. See ya.